If you're 41 years old and you graduate from college, give me a hell yeah. Let's talk about this week. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update, the first in April, and lots of things going on this week because, like I just talked about, I'm done with school, but I'll talk about that here at the end, guys. So, hey, it's a wild, wild week. Is it going okay for you guys? It's going okay here. The thing that's going on on the channel right now is that subscriber count just keeps continuing to go up, and I just realized, wow, we might actually hit to 10,000 before like June. I, I, this is amazing. This is amazing, guys. My goal for the end of the year was 7,500. And we already passed that. I did a live stream for it. And it got me out thinking, do would you guys want me to do a 10K live stream? Because I had a ton of fun doing that. So if you guys would like to see me do that more often, please let me know because uh, feedback is something that I always, always listen to. And if it's something that you guys want me to do, I'm going to probably do it. So don't be afraid to tell me, hey, yeah, do more of those or eh, not really for me. That's okay. There are no wrong answers here. I want to do what you guys are interested in me doing. So uh, I'd love to do a 10K live stream. And I mean, shoot, we're currently up on 9,000 right now. So uh, I don't be, I mean, I say I don't think I'd be hitting uh, another thousand in a month, but did last month so we'll see we'll see what's going on here uh it's uh it's just it's been a wild ride and i'm just having a blast i'm glad you guys like it uh but you know that was before i finished the wheel of time now i have finished the wheel of time and that means i am in somewhat of a wheel of time post-mortem uh, a little bit of a detox decompression i think as i put it in that memory of light review by the way i did my reviews for a wheel of, uh, i'm sorry a memory of light i did it in two parts uh, i i thought that it went pretty well uh, i got a couple of uh snarky comments about how terrible i am in the comments and that's fine that's fine i've always said my reviews aren't gonna be for everyone but you know hey thanks for watching 15 hours worth of my reviews to tell me how terrible i was i appreciate that for my algorithm it's great um so that's where we are guys as far as my wheel of time post-mortem I finally have started peeking in that uh, that nice little compendium back there, the uh, the companion. Uh, so I'm not scared of spoilers anymore. So I feel like I can actually read some of that that companion a little bit. I used it a little bit when I went through the for the maps during the last battle. But this is the first time I'm actually like looking at it and reading things about it. So uh, nice, handsome little collection there. It's more than just a really nice cover, which is what it's been for me for the last year because I was afraid of getting spoiled or whatnot. Uh, but uh, you, again, check out those uh, reviews for A Memory Light if you have a chance. Uh, I, I think that's... I said that I felt like the ending of the book felt kind of rushed. I kind of felt like the ending of that review was kind of rushed because my voice started cracking and I was afraid you guys were going to see me rolling a manly tear in there. I just again want to reiterate how amazing you guys were during this. This read through would not have been nearly as fun without you. Uh, it's a wonderful story on its own right. And I'll never forget this story for not only how great the journey was for pretty much building this channel, but a lot of the relationships I've established uh, with wheel, other, other wheelies. Yes, I'm a wheelie now. I'm a completionist. So um, I, I want to say thank you guys again. You have made this so fun. And uh, it's not really over. Like I said in there, it's not the ending. It's an ending. There are no endings in the Wheel of Time. Lots of TV show coverage coming up. And not just that, uh, I have other really popular wheelies out there who want me to talk to them on their channel. Uh, there's another one coming up that I haven't really locked down anything with, so I don't want to actually bring it up in case it don't happen because I don't want to put them on the spot. That'd be very unprofessional. But uh, one who had, had been asking me for a while is, you know, is Nate Bliss. If you don't know who Nate Bliss is, uh, you don't know Wheel of Time, apparently. Uh, he is one of the gold standards of Wheel of Time coverage on the channel, doing deep dives, all kinds of lore, countdowns, anything you really want to know about. And it's funny because his uh, five non-spoiler reasons why you should watch Wheel of Time, uh, he he kind of denigrates it, but I thought it was really, really well done in a way that made me, okay, I'm going to do this. So uh, to be that kind of full circle here, to be a guest on his channel, and I'll put that video up here for you, being a guest on his channel to talk about 
Wheel of Time and, and what it was like as a first time reader and him hitting me with a lot of rapid fire questions. He didn't tell me anything he was going to ask me. And uh, it was a good time. It was a really good time. Uh, uh, I didn't get to read as much of the chat as I wanted to because it was it was his stream. I didn't want to step on his feet at all or whatever. But uh, it was a great, great time. And if you guys just like good Wheel of Time coverage and discussion, uh, I check that out if you can. And drop him a subscribe if you haven't because you're doing it wrong if you haven't. So uh, again, I want to thank him uh, because he gave me the first real bump I gotten on this channel in a while. And uh, if I can do anything to help him in the future, I'm definitely going to do so. Great dude. Great dude and great channel. Great content. I get to watch his spoiler stuff now. I was actually watching uh, his one on the most powerful channelers uh, actually last night. Yeah, late last night and I finished it up this morning. Uh, so great, great stuff on his channel. Please check it out. Uh, as for what I am actually reading right now, uh, I have continued Valor by John Gwynn. I've told you guys how good Malice was at this point. Valor continues that trend. Obviously, I got a little behind on it because of school this week. It was finals, but I don't have to say that anymore. So, um, yeah, I'll be picking this up, uh, the speed on it. I'm only, I'm saying I'm only about 40% through it right now, which is, is funny because I burned through that first one in like four days. And it isn't because this is a slower thing. It's because of two things. I'm dividing. I'm one, uh, school got in the way. And two, me and my wife have gotten hooked on Last Kingdom. I'll tell you about in a minute. And three, uh, I'm splitting time with another book. Uh, so that's that's what it is. So uh, I'm definitely going to probably be finishing this up this week now that I got a little extra time on my hands. Because, uh, yeah, I'm only a book and a half into the series. And I can already tell it probably going to crack my top 10 for 2021 list uh, when I get into uh, you know my top 10 series. I did my top 10 favorite fantasy series. And it was as of 2020. Yeah, this one's probably going to make its way in if it continues the trend that it is because so many characters and they're so well written. And I don't know how more people don't talk about this series or talk about John Gwynn at all because this is the kind of modern fantasy I've been kind of looking for. And uh, if you guys need to know more about what the series is about, I did a uh, little why I decided to read and it kind of turned into why you should read in the middle of it because I was about two-thirds through the first book at the time. So it'll give you lots of information there if you're still curious about the series. But as much as I've been talking about it on the channel, unless you're a new viewer, I'm pretty sure you know why I wanted to read John Gwynn and that I've been excited about this. And it's good to know that that excitement is paying off because it's really good. Uh, next up, uh, Ben actually uh, continued my finally continued my Dresden Files stuff. Uh, I took a quick, not really a break as much as I was just like, okay, I, after I finished it, I, I finished the end of Wheel of Time. I wanted to focus on just that. And then I started Malice. And then I was like, okay, uh, my schedule for Dresden Files is I'm going to be doing books 10, 11, and 12 in, a, what month is it? May. And then uh, 13, 14, 15 in June. And if I have time, uh, briefcases and side jobs are for Peace Talks come out. But I finally did my review for White Knight. I'll put it up here for you. It, it, it was one that I actually, I don't want to say I struggled with it because in the review, it, it sounds like I don't really have a lot of negative about it. And I don't, I don't. I think all these books are great. And it's not just a line. I really believe that. I just didn't feel like it was as strong as some of the previous outings. And I, I wondered if it was get to the point, my first instance of uh, some burnout in the series. And I don't think that's the case because I'm also reading Small Favor right now and I'm liking it quite a bit. So I don't think there's any really burnout or anything like that. I just kind of needed a brief little, uh, you know, like a week break or something, read some epic fantasy before I got back into the urban fantasy. But I'm reading this right now, guys. It's very good. And I think a lot of people in the Discord, by the way, click the link, join the Discord. We'd love to have you over there. And uh, it's in the description down below. Just click the link, join in. It's a fun time. Anyhow, a lot of people over there said they think that this is going to be my favorite since Death Masks because of how much I love Death Masks and how much, um, did I say Death Masks? Death Masks. <laughs> S's are tough. Uh, I just I just read Harry Potter to my kid for like an hour. So my voice is, oh, you guys need to know that, right? Oh, I love doing this live. And uh, I, I think that a lot of the characters that people know I love in Dresden Files, uh, some of the secondary characters are some of the main players in this one. So yeah, I'm having a good time. And right now it's full steam ahead to changes, right? A change just means to be where everybody says, well, everything changes. And uh, yeah, that should be happening by the end of this month. Uh, that is a three, I'm doing three Dresden Files this month and just kind of filling in 
uh, the faithful and the fallen in between there whenever I can. But Dresden is the priority. And don't worry, guys. I haven't forgotten about Mistborn. Mistborn Era 2 starts in June. So uh, looking forward to that. I'm not going to sweep that under the rug. I do still intend to do my Hero of Ages review. Things just kind of with uh, with this whole quarantine and all that stuff, things just kind of got out of hand and I kind of lost track of things. But I will go back and do Hero of Ages before I start Mistborn Era 2. So I apologize if you've been waiting for that. Real quick book thing that I want to talk about here for a second is what I said is when I finished Wheel of Time is I found like I felt like I had so much newfound freedom. You know, I've got the I've got my schedule with the Cosmere. I've got my schedule with Dresden Files or whatever. But I feel like I can fit new things in there now since I'm not starting Malazan until January. And that's how it happened when I moved up. Uh, I moved up the Faithful and the Fallen or whatever. But another series that has been shooting up my TBR list, and I think I'm actually going to start it before my 2021 plan, and that is the Lycanius Trilogy by James Islington. And I feel like this has gotten some weird feedback because I have people that tell me it is the best freaking new new modern fantasy series since anything. And I also have some people tell me it's just pure garbage. And I started trying to see what where where was this divide happening? And this could be off. This is just total assumption here. Don't quote me on this or anything. Or, or, if you do, don't paraphrase me. What I'm saying is this is the this is the conclusion that I'm drawing. I told you guys I, I believe in the reviews of Petrick on Goodreads. Great, great uh, reviewer. If you haven't, check him out on Goodreads. I, I'll link him in the description. I feel like his reviews, we share a brain on these. Is it like He's a much better writer, obviously. I mean that we share a brain in our, or what we like, what we like. And it was his reviews of, of Faith on the Fallen that led me to it. And he goes on and on about Lycanius, about how wonderful it is. And his exact words are, it's imagine Wheel of Time without the fluff. And I know that that is something that really, really triggers Wheel of Time fans because they don't believe any of its fluff. He didn't finish that series. He only got four books in and decided it wasn't for him. So that right there might make you say, okay, well, I'm not listening to anything this guy says. I've constantly said, I can see how Wheel of Time isn't for everybody. I enjoyed it for sure. Uh, but... I felt like something that would help me with my Wheel of Time hangover is something that is like a Wheel of Time, but not as much of a commitment. This is just three books or three thick books, but just three books or whatever. But what I'm going back to here on the divide is I've noticed that the people who have really put it down, big Wheel of Time fans. And it makes me wonder, is this because it gets compared that way to Wheel of Time so much? Has that poisoned them against it before they even start? I don't know. I don't know. That's just kind of a, a quick thing. Like I said, when I, I never take reviews for a grimdark book seriously because a lot of people can't handle grimdark or whatever, uh, I don't think I would be able to handle. Someone says, "Oh, this is like Lord of the Rings, but without the fluff." And then I read it. I'd probably I'd be going into it with my arms crossed, you know, like whatever. I ain't listening to that garbage. So I wonder if that has anything to do with it. But anyway, uh, I got a really good price on the first book. Uh, it isn't actually here yet, but uh, I'm not going to read it before I finish Faithful in the Fallen. But I think that's the one. I'm going to continue with my Sanderson. I'm going to continue with my Jim Butcher. But after I finish Faithful in the Fallen, I think that Lycanius is the next one I'm going to kind of try to sub in there somewhere. So uh, if you guys have read it, uh, let me know your opinions in the comments because I'm very much interested to hear what other readers that, you know, of the viewers of this channel feel about that series because uh, I take you guys' opinions very, very seriously. And I feel like you wouldn't be here if we didn't have some of the same interests. So uh, let me know what you guys think about Lycanius by James Islington because uh, I've heard mostly good stuff. So there it is. Non-book news. I don't know if it's actually news, but you guys know uh, The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Season four dropped. I talked about it last week that we were going to... Uh, we didn't actually weren't current that we had saved season three to watch right before it's night. Am I glad that we did? Cause we burned through season three in like two days. Holy crap guys. Is that show good? It is fantastic. I can't believe more people don't talk about this show. Every bit as good as game of Thrones when it was good. Every bit as good as Vikings. It really is. And I think something that it actually does better than those shows is, Oh my God, the characters and their friendships on that show they have some off-the-charts chemistry, those actors, because I believe that they are friends. I believe that they love each other. And something I love about Vikings 
was the bromance between King Ekbert and, and Ragnar. In The Last Kingdom, you have one with Uhtred, son of Uhtred, and, and, and Alfred the Great. And I feel like it is every bit as good as those two. Just any time those two are in a room or just in a scene alone together, that show freaking soars, man. Season 3, amazing. We've only watched the first couple of Season 4, but it seems to be continuing the trend. That's one of those shows that people tell you, oh yeah, every season gets better. It's true so far. It's true. Season 3, man. That is one of the finest seasons of television I have watched. And that's not hyperbole, guys. It's a very, very good show. And I've had so many people tell me, mm, I like that genre. I just wasn't really, it just really didn't grab me. Keep trying. Because you don't like, you don't sit here and tell me that you like good TV, but you couldn't get into The Last Kingdom. Sorry. Those two things are just, they don't work. That, it's, just, it's just an untrue statement. Fantastic television. Watch it because I want to get all these books adapted to television. And you know what? That's another series that's quickly rushing up my TBR is The Saxon Stories by, uh, by Bernard Cornwell. So for sure, interested, especially after watching the show, because if if those books are anything as good as that TV series is, and I'm sure they are, because great TV series usually come from great source material, uh, I'm going to have a blast with this one. So that's kind of all the TV we're doing right now. All we've had time for, because it's just it's just taking up all of our free time. Uh, finished reading uh, Prisoner of Azkaban with my kid, and um, and we watched the movie. And it's so fun watching his reaction. Before we started, he was like, oh, I think I can't. I asked him, I was like, what are you most interested to see, you know, that you read in the book that you want to see on screen? He said, I can't wait to see Gryffindor win the Quidditch Cup. I didn't say anything. It's like he has to learn the pain of reading the book and then seeing the adaptation and not getting it exactly like you imagined it or exactly how it happened in the book. So uh, a little bit of a cruel dad shit there on me, but it's okay. It's okay. He just can't. A couple times he just kept saying, why are they doing it different? <laughs> so good. But he mostly enjoyed the movie. Uh, but uh, I, he told me that's his favorite one so far, uh, as far as the book, as far as the book goes. And that is my favorite Harry Potter book. But this is my first reread of this series. And we just started Goblet of Fire. And I'm like, this is pretty good. It's pretty good. So um, in my memory, Prisoner of Azkaban was my favorite book. But I remember the Goblet of Fire was right there with us. So I'm excited to keep doing that with him. That's a fun little bonding time for sure. Although the reason my voice is a little messed up right now is because I do voices when I read it. You guys don't know my dream job is to get a job with Audible, reading audiobooks. So I try to you know make different voices and all that. And he actually stopped me tonight and said, y you got to stop the voice for Voldemort. What do you mean? He's like, you're doing it wrong. What do you mean I'm doing it wrong? He said, it sounds, it sounds almost exactly like your Dumbledore voice. you got to change it up. So I had to change it a little bit. And it, was, it, it put a strain on my voice because the first, like, 30 pages of Goblet of Fire are Wormtail and Voldemort, you know? So it, it, was, a, it was exhausting. But uh, it's very cool that he's keeping me honest like that. And he's noticing them. I'm spoiling him with these, with these, with these readings, I think. Uh, there are a couple of video game things I want to talk about, guys. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I just talked about Last Kingdom and Vikings. Obviously, very much into the, the the Viking War with England stuff. And they're making an Assassin's Creed game. I know that people that are longtime Assassin's Creed fans do not like what they've done with the series. Someone like me that didn't hop on until Origins because I love the open world thing. Yeah, yeah. Give me all of that on day one. Comes out in, the, I think, it just said holiday. I assumed it was November. It just said holiday 2020. Uh, but it seems like single player games are just kind of going the way of the dodo. And that breaks my heart because I'm a single player guy. I don't do the online gaming. But I love an open world game. And I loved Origins. I loved Odyssey. And now I'm getting Valhalla. Dude, this is great. Because I was like, give me a giant open world. I don't care about the Assassin's Creed part of the story. I don't care about the non-historical part. Give me an open world in incredible historical locations like ancient Egypt and ancient Greece and now uh, Wessex, Northumbria and, and uh, what uh, Mercia. That uh, yeah, hell yes, give me all of that. I and apparently you can like actually like build up your villages and stuff, so you can like actually become like a jarl and then become like run a fort and stuff like that and run a kingdom. Oh my god, this sounds amazing! I can't wait! I can't wait! Even if it's just Assassin's Creed uh, Skyrim. Sign me up. Sign me up for sure. So, like I said, I understand the criticisms of longtime Assassin's Creed fans that they don't like where the series has gone. Uh, I feel the same way about Final Fantasy. You know, a lot of uh, younger folks that didn't jump on until like Final Fantasy X or X, whatever you want to call it. 
And I was like, ah, that's where I think it went downhill. And there's a lot of people that do the same to me. They tell me, because I didn't come on board until Origins, that, oh, well, that's where it started to go downhill. So I get it. I get it. But for me, I'm all about it. I pre-order this son of a bitch. I can't wait to play this day one, for sure. Uh, also, a little old school thing. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever had a Sega Genesis. I don't know how many of you are that old. Uh, when we were kids, when our parents divorced as we were kids, uh, our parents started competing for our love, right? And um, my brother had a Super Nintendo. And my dad was like, well, if you want a Super Nintendo, I'll get you one too. And I was like, well, hell no, get me a Genesis. That way we have both of them, right? So it seemed like everybody I knew at school had either or. They had a Super Nintendo, they had a Genesis. So when we got Genesis and we got Streets of Rage, and Streets of Rage was such a cool game. Just uh, our case, I'll just beat them up, side scroller, right? Just pretty much just set the stage for things like Final Fight and did um, the, the Ninja Turtles side scroller beat em ups. And it was just, it was not really ahead of its time. It's just, it was so fun. It was just like an embodiment of that gen of gaming. And uh, they made three of them on the Genesis. Well, they just released Streets of Rage 4. And it's amazing. It's so fun, man. It just feels... I can't even explain it. I just go to YouTube and check out some gameplay footage. I'm not going to put it here because I'll strike the video down if I put footage of it up here. But just know, man, it is... If you played those games, or even if you didn't, you'll have a blast with this. Uh, you played like Double Dragon or something like that. It's so fun. It's so true to what made the series great, yet it has that fresh coat of paint that you would require for somebody today. And this has made me hoping that they do this, the same engine, and remaster parts one, two, and three. That'd be so fun. Take my money, Sega. This is great. I need to see more stuff like this. Because uh, those, those are the kind of throwbacks, the nostalgia, that I'm off. I'm going to say I don't, I'm tired of these HD remasters that are the same damn game with a fresh coat of paint, and then they, you know, they charge you full price for it. Something like that, though, I don't know if I could say no. I remember they redid Bionic Commando like that. They called Bionic Commando Rearmed, and I got that. Uh, I think they've redone a couple of Castlevanias and stuff. So I'm okay with it in instances. I'll be a big old hypocrite about that. So uh, check that out if you haven't. Lastly, I just want to close by saying, yes, I've teased it numerous times. I finished school this week. It is pretty much an exhilarating feeling. Uh, so guys, don't ever think that it's too late. 37 years old, went back to school. And here I am now, a college graduate at the age of 41. So don't ever tell yourself that it's too late or that you can't do it. I had a newborn baby when I went back to school. You know, he's about to turn five. So yeah, guys, it's never too late to go back. And I just, I can't believe it. I feel like this is something I've been, oh yeah, well, I'll eventually get there. It's Now it's here. Now it's here and the job market sucks because of quarantine or whatnot. So uh, I can't really go back to being a grown up again just yet, but it's just really exciting to have that sense of accomplishment to finally be done with this. And uh, it's something that I regret. I waited this long in life to do. Uh, you know, don't, don't do that thing after high school where you're like, well, I'm just gonna take a quick break and then I'll go back later because you probably won't. So uh, I kicked the can down the road for 20 damn years and here I am now, finally, 41 years old and a college graduate. So, uh, Harry, there it is. There it is. There's my nice little pat on the back for myself. I just wanted to kind of take a quick little victory lap about that because I'm very, very excited. And I feel like I always tell you guys, oh, school's been kicking my ass. Not anymore. Not anymore. School is done. Just a grown up now. Can't wait. Can't wait. So, guys, how is your week? What are you doing? What are you listening to? What are you playing? What are you reading? That's the big one. Drop in the comments and let me know how things are going and what you're doing. And have yourselves a great weekend.